Hello everybody! So here is Luna Belier again and I'm here to talk about functions and art in another Reasonings in the Open video. So before starting, as always, I want to point out for those of you who haven't watched this segment yet, uh, that this segment, Reasonings in the Open, is a purely experimental segment where I dart out my ideas of how the world out there could be categorized. So this specific video here is me going crazy about art and functions. I have been thinking and pondering about this subject for quite a long time and in the end I decided to make this weird and a little different from my usual videos. Uh, and I want to start with pointing out that every function in one way or the other can be uh, responsible in some way for artistic production. We have a very we have great artists that are INTP, for example. Uh, we have great artists of any type out there. Uh, so any function can really be responsible for. Uh, for art and can create art in some way. My first idea, my first thought is uh, I've seen an INTP artist, for example, uh, that creates uh, these weird um, environments, uh, these weird landscapes, sort of landscapes uh, uh, of uh, cities without, without uh, citizens uh, uh, that are very, very queer like and very, 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 very cold. Uh, or these are other environments that are made of made of pattern uh, patterns and stuff. That kind of artist right there is an INT is obviously and clearly an INTP artist. Um, I don't I don't have any exp uh, any example of that, so I'm I'm sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, another kind of TI painting that is, in my opinion, more paired uh, with extroverted sensing is instead, for example, cubism. Uh, so we have the highest exponent uh, in, uh, oh my god, uh, Picasso. Uh, and then we have, for example, abstracts like Kandinsky. Uh, that is uh, another way to categorize reality via uh, this strong TI. So Two examples uh, uh, of TI paintings, like I said, Cubism uh, with Picasso and Kandinsky uh, with his abstracts. What I actually want to uh, focus on, though, is not these um, kinds of um, uh, of, of art. Uh, it's not TI I want to focus on. I would rather want to talk about three particular functions, specifically about two of these three, which are introverted sensing, extroverted sensing, and introverted intuition. What the hell is introverted intuition doing in there? And why do I want to talk about introverted intuition but not about extroverted intuition? I'm not being racist here. The only reason why I'm excluding extroverted intuition is that the artistic form of extroverted intuition is um, particularly abstract. So it's basically creating something that is not there. Surrealism, for example. This could be an example of extroverted intuition. So create something, creating something that could be there but is actually not existing. Uh, so it's not really what I want to focus on this right now. I would rather focus on these other three because introverted sensing and introverted intuition in this sense tend to kind of overlap in a way and they become very interesting. So let's start from extroverted sensing. For extroverted sensing, I would, would look into a specific kind of neoclassicism, uh, which is this 
this is the statue of love and psych. Uh, as you can see, we have very static, very static artistic, artistic expression. There is some movement. There is some implicit movement in the statue, but it's very static. It's reality, basically. Uh, this person probably had two models uh, and they were posing that way and the statue was made exactly like two human beings uh, and the shape, the form is that of two human beings. Even more uh, extroverted sensing, because here it's probably as I, uh, uh, extroverted sensing uh, auxiliary in this uh, Love and Psych statue, because we have a strong introvert intuition influence there, um, and we will see it in a moment. Um, another form of extroverted sensing art we have in pure neoclassicism, like paintings of the era of Napoleon, uh, like this one, for example. This painting, paintings here represent reality the way it is. They're not made to transmit uh, particular feelings or particular emotions or sensations or whatever. They are pure, pure and raw reality, the way it was seen back at the time. So that's, that right there is uh, very extroverted sensing paintings. Um, if we move a little bit inside of the same movement uh, and we remain in the uh, environment uh, of neoclassicism anyway, we also have scenes uh, of killings, scenes of murder, scenes of uh, a little bit more um, sensory experiences like physical pain. And these paintings, like this one for example, Uh, show very clearly uh, this uh, sensation, this physical sensation that is the movement that is going on in the, in, in the painting, in the moment in which uh, the scene is uh, taking place. Another form that I would attribute uh, to introverted sensing, possibly uh, creative, is uh, uh, vegetable faces, I call them this way. Uh, because uh, these faces uh, uh, give the idea of the person, transmit sensory sensations. They're also funny in, in some kind of way, so there's this actual intuition influence in there. Um, but they are made to transmit some, some sensory idea. It's not symbolism, if you think about it. There's no, nothing symbolic about these images. Uh, Anyway, let's get back to our neoclassicism in the extroverted sensing form and the introverted sensing form. Because now I want to introduce Leonardo da Vinci and his uh, aerial perspective. When we look at Leonardo da Vinci's the, uh, aerial perspective, for example, in the Madonna on the Rocks, we see that there is something going on right there that is not extroverted intuition, so potential reality. It's not extroverted sensing, so modals, posing. There is something going on right there, and it's not a sensory experience. There is symbolism going on there. There are symbols represented in th this painting, and this aerial perspective that Leonardo da Vinci was using is actually some kind of a door towards the subconscious. So for example, in the Madonna on the Rocks, uh, we have a representation of the person that is rejected by society and embraced by the Virgin as equal to everybody else. Leonardo da Vinci, we know now that was possibly homosexual. There's, there are rumors that Leonardo was homosexual. And he was anyway a person that didn't fit in in society. He didn't feel 
like he, he was fitting in in society. Great inventor, great mind, great brain, but he, he lived all, all his life moving here and there. And in this specific painting, we see this idea of rejection, this subconscious rejection that is represented uh, through this uh, cavern uh, that we have back there that is the door to the subconscious uh, and how society reacts versus the embracing image of this uh, uh, Madonna, of this uh, virgin. So this is a little bit the influence uh, that we see of functions uh, in uh, paintings. Uh, and I hope that this gives you a rough idea of how to spot functions uh, in art when you cross it. I'm leaving out modern, so-called modern art, because I'm not much of a fan of modern art. Um, because I don't, I, don't, I don't really see it as making much sense. Um, except for those people that are anyway doing something meaningful. Mm. But anyway, those of you who follow videos online know what I'm talking about and who I'm agreeing with. Anyway, yeah, I think I will close this video here and I gave a rough idea of what I was thinking and I hope it helped you think about it uh, a little bit too and I will talk to you soon. Bye!